do you want to discipline this nurse? Yeah, I was just I was, this hot nurse needs to be disciplined. Yep. You're like, what what kind of show did I just tune into? <laughs> hey, this is this is a real story. It's from the New York Post. All right. So don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> a nurse in Russia was suspended from the hospital where she worked in Tula, which is 100 miles south of Moscow. After she arrived at her shift in an all-male coronavirus patient wing with no clothing, save for her skivvies, under her transparent personal protective equipment. While there were reportedly no complaints from her patients, duh. None of the patients complained. But another staff member did. Because they had to update the death numbers. Yeah. Because they received new information from the health director in the state of Colorado. And you say, hang on a second. Why would the Wyoming health director need to wait to hear information from Colorado to update it? Because we now have officially 10, even though two of those 10 didn't get it here, didn't travel here, and didn't die here. But they had a home of record here. Yeah. <laughs> Leadership trait of the week. We're going to start. Uh, we're going to go back right now, ladies and gentlemen. We need leaders in America. And let's talk about discipline or decisiveness and leadership because, ladies and gentlemen, the United States of America needs leaders, not followers. And this is from the book Gorillas in the Mist. Uh, decisiveness. This trait is developed in the Patriot through a, com uh, a combination of thorough, very demanding training and uh, placing of would be and placing of the would be leader in progressively more challenging positions of absolute authority, including actual combat missions. Pennsylvania school directors threat to shoot anyone without a mask who comes close to her rankles. Some in community. Some. Not everyone. Some. Apparently some people think it's a good idea. Rankled the community. Dr. Jennifer Rager K. Posted. Rage, she's she's a Rager K. Posted the comment in reaction to picture of anti-lockdown protests last week in Harrisburg, many of whom were not wearing masks. She wrote, I find it interesting that the largest group of participants in the anti-lockdown protest and refusing to wear masks in public as they see it, as a violation of their constitutional rights are among those against a form of gun regulations. If you refuse to wear a mask and try to come within six feet of me or my family, I will exercise the same constitutional rights to shoot you. It's actually not a constitutional right, but cool. All right, go ahead and put a pin in that right there, Jared, and we're good, then we'll continue. Every single person in our audience, I would hope, just jumped up and down and said, oh, oh. Oh, 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 Mr. Cotter, Mr. Cotter, Mr. Cotter, Mr. Cotter, this stupid just invalidated her permit. She just invalidated her permit by threatening to, to, to shoot someone who didn't threaten her. And that was premeditated. <laughs> she just, she just made a, a statement of premeditation. Exactly. I said, if your state does not have constitutional carry. They are holding your rights hostage and ransoming them back to you. All right. I'm going to explain that. In the United States of America, when we started this whole grand self-government, you know, representative republic experiment, people just understood that the citizen can and should be in possession of arms. And we did it. Right? And then as time went by, and the primary culprit in this what was the, uh, the big city. We're going to have police departments, and those guys are responsible for your safety. And you don't need to be carrying guns, and, and you're not allowed. It, I mean, we've been dealing with this in our country for over 100 years or more. We punish the citizen for the actions of the criminal. Hey, your mayor you know, commissioner, whatever, you say we need a law to, to make it illegal for people to carry knives or guns because people, they're bad people are stabbing and shooting other people. And they're like, yeah. You say, so you're telling me that a person is willing to commit a homicide. They're willing to murder another human with a knife or a gun 
and they're they're fine with that. They can mentally justify that. But if you tell them that they can't have a knife or a gun, then they'll just acquiesce and say, oh, well, f- I was going to go stab a mother, f- but the city council just passed an ordinance saying that I'm not allowed to carry a knife anymore. Can I make a very blat- uh, blanket statement? Nope. You can make a sheet statement, That's though. Too bad. If you go out in public and are wearing rubber gloves, you're a f- Yeah. Like people don't understand how rubber gloves work. Like people who go to the store and they put them on before they go in and they walk and they touch a bunch of shit and they go up to the to the self checkout and they touch a bunch of shit and they go and they touch the door and they go out and they put their, grab their steering wheel and they go home and they unpack everything. It's like it's that's like not having how regu- rubber gloves work. Yeah, you, you're supposed to throw them away before you touch you your car. You're everything. Spo- you're supposed to touch. Basically, okay, here's the idea behind rubber gloves: you touch one thing. When you wear, when you go to scrub out your toilet and you put on rubber gloves, you know what you do as soon as you're done scrubbing the toilet? You throw them away. I lick them. Why? You know, you know what you do when you freaking have surgery? You, you not have surgery. Uh, perform surgery and you freaking cut the person open and shove your hands in there? You know what you do with the rubber gloves? You lick them. You em. immediately throw them away. If, no, no. You wear you, them all day. You go to yeah. the cafeteria with your gloves on. You, the second you get your, your milk and your everything. And, that you touch anything, the gloves are now worthless. Yeah. Or no, the, what's the other one with uh, Dustin Hoffman, where the monkey gave the kid the virus, and and they had to shut down the city. I do not know. They're, and they were going to nuke it, but then he came up with the the cure at the very end. What the fuck was I called? All right, grad program. What was it? Dustin Hoffman, virus, going to blow up. They were going to nuke. They were going to like neutron bomb a, a, a Washington city, and the bomb was in the air. And they're getting ready to drop it. And he's like, I got the cure. I got the cure. Don't f- drop it. What was that called? 